Yeah, we are going live on Facebook now. We'll start in another a minute or so. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you all for the 440th Telangana Jani Vedika's every Sunday session. Uh, today's session is based on 131st coming birthday of uh, birth anniversary of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and the Constitution of India. For this important session, we have invited one of the most legal luminaries popular regional luminaries in, in, in Telangana and probably all over India, Pre L. Ravichandra. Uh, I, I thank him on, you, on behalf of myself and on behalf of you for accepting our invitation and readily accepting to, in, uh, to speak on this subject. Since, thank, uh, you. thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, since Dr. This since Ravi Chandra Garu is uh, he will speak in a, he, this speech forum is uh, he's well versed in English too, but it will be a bilingual program in, in for the convenience of other audiences. I welcome him, and uh, before wasting any more much much of your time, I would like to read out the preamble of the Constitution as our practices. In Telangana Janavedika. And uh, before that, uh, after before the speaker takes over, Dr. Arthur Srinivasu will give a introduction of him and also the subject. Thank you. I'll uh, read out this preamble in Telugu because every time James is doing it in English, so this time I want to do it in Telugu. Thank you. Rajanga Patyam. భారత ప్రజలమైన మేము భారతదేశాన్ని సర్వసత్తాక సామ్యవాద లౌకిక ప్రజాస్వామ్య గణతంత్ర రాజ్యంగా నిర్మించుకోవడానికి పౌరులందరికీ సాంఘిక ఆర్థిక రాజకీయ న్యాయాన్ని ఆలోచన భావ ప్రకటన విశ్వాసము ధర్మము ఆరాధన స్వాతంత్రాన్ని అంతస్తులోనూ అవకాశాల్లోనూ సమానత్వాన్ని చేకూర్చడానికి వారందరిలో వ్యక్తిత్వ గౌరవాన్ని జాతీయ సమైక్యతను సంరక్షిస్తూ సౌభారతత్వాన్ని పెంపొంచడానికి మన ఈ రాజ్యాంగ పరిషత్తులో పంతొమ్మిది వందల నలభై తొమ్మిది నవంబర్ ఇరవై ఆరో తేదీన ఎంపిక చేసుకుని శాసనంగా రూపొందించుకున్న ఈ రాజ్యాంగాన్ని మాకు మేము సమర్పించుకుంటున్నాం invite the speaker to speak. I thank you all and I wish you all a happy Sri Ramanavami. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Telangana General Vika. Jumal. Vedalu Ravichandra Garki. వేదిక సభ్యులు మిత్రులు అందరికి సాయంకాల నమస్కారాలు తెలియజేస్తూ అందరికి స్వాగతం సుస్వాగతం ఇవాళ మనము ఎన్నుకున్నటువంటి అంశం డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ భారత రాజ్యాంగం అనేటువంటి అంశాన్ని ఎన్నుకోవడం అనేటువంటి జరిగింది ఎందుకంటే ప్రధానంగా ఈ నెల పద్నాలుగో తేదీన డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ గారి జయంతిని పురస్కరించుకొని ఈ టాపిక్ ను మనం ప్రధానంగా ఎన్నుకోవడం జరిగింది రాజ్యాంగం గురించి తెలియని వారు దేశంలో ఎవరు ఉన్నారు అని చెప్పేసి నేను అనుకుంటున్నాను భావిస్తున్నాను ప్రధానంగా డెబ్బై ఐదు స్వతంత్రాల డెబ్బై ఐదు వసంతాల స్వతంత్ర భారతదేశంలో రాజ్యాంగం వచ్చేసి డెబ్బై రెండు సంవత్సరాలు గడిచిపోయింది డెబ్బై మూడవ సంవత్సరంలో మనం అడుగు పెట్టాం ఈ డెబ్బై మూడు వసంత భారత రాజ్యాంగం ఈ దేశంలో కోట్లాది మంది ప్రజలకు కావలసినటువంటి హక్కులను కానీ స్వేచ్ఛ కానీ సమానత్వాన్ని కానీ సౌవర్తుత్వాన్ని కానీ బడుగు బలైన వర్గాలకు సంబంధించినటువంటి అనేక హక్కులను అందులో పొందపరిచిన పొందుపరిచినటువంటి ఒక గొప్ప మేధావి ప్రపంచ మేధావి డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ గారని 
చెప్పడంలో ఏమాత్రం సందేహం లేదు దాన్ని ఆధారంగా చేసుకుని ప్రపంచంలో ఉండేటువంటి అతి ప్రధానమైనటువంటి రాజ్యాంగాలను సుమారుగా నూట ఎనిమిది ఎనిమిది యాభై ఎనిమిది రాజ్యాంగాలను సూక్ష్మంగా పరిశీలించి దాంట్లో ఉండేటువంటి ప్రధానమైనటువంటి అంశాలు ఒకటిగా చేసి ఇవాళ మన భారత రాజ్యాంగం మన ముందు ఉంది అంటే దానికి ప్రధానమైనటువంటి కారకులు డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ గారు వారి యొక్క కృషి ఫలితంగానే ప్రపంచంలో అనే అతి పెద్ద ప్రజాసామిక దేశంగా ఇవాళ భారతదేశం కొనసాగుతుంది అంటే కూడా డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ గారి యొక్క కృషి అని చెప్పడంలో కూడా ఏమాత్రం సందేహం లేదు అయితే ఈ మధ్య కాలంలో తెలంగాణ రాష్ట్ర ముఖ్యమంత్రి గారు భారత రాజ్యాంగాన్ని మార్చాలనేటువంటి ఒక అంశాన్ని తెర మీద తీసుకురావడం అది పెద్ద చర్చగా మారడం అనేటువంటిది కూడా మనం చూస్తున్నాం నిజానికి భారత రాజ్యాంగం ఈ దేశంలో ఉండేటువంటి అత్యధిక ప్రజల యొక్క వారి యొక్క హక్కులను లేదా స్వేచ్ఛ సమానత్వాన్ని పొందుతున్నారని చెప్పుకునేటువంటి ప్రయత్నం జరిగింది జరుగుతూనే ఉంది ఏదో కొద్ది మందికి రాజ్యాంగ ఫలాలు అందలేదు అనేటువంటి దృష్టితో దాన్ని రాజ్యాంగాన్ని మార్చాలి లేదా దాన్ని పునర్లిఖించాలి లేదా సమీక్షించాలి అనేటువంటి ఒక వాదన కూడా ఈ మధ్య కాలంలో పెద్ద ఎత్తున రావడం అనేటువంటి జరుగుతుంది కొంతమంది వ్యక్తులకు మాత్రమే రాజ్యాంగ ఫలాలు అందుతున్నాయి మెజార్టీ పీపుల్కి అందుతాయి అనేటువంటిది కొంతమంది వ్యక్తుల యొక్క వాదన ఏది ఏమైనప్పటికీ భారత రాజ్యాంగం ద్వారానే మనం ఇవాళ ప్రభుత్వాలు కొనసాగుతున్నాయి దాంట్లో భాగంగానే అది తెలంగాణ రాష్ట్రం కానీ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ రాష్ట్రం కానీ కేంద్ర ప్రభుత్వాలు కానీ ఏది ఏమైనా అంటే భారత రాజ్యాంగాన్ని మించింది ఏది లేదు ఈ దేశంలో అనేటువంటిది చెప్పడంలో కూడా ఏమాత్రం సందేశించవలసినటువంటి అవసరం లేదు అందులో భాగంగానే డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ భారత రాజ్యాంగం అనేటువంటి అంశం పైన శ్రీ రవిచంద్ర గారు వారు సీనియర్ అడ్వకేట్ గా గారు గత నలభై సంవత్సరాల నుండి అడ్వకేట్ గా పనిచేస్తున్నారు ప్రధానంగా ఒక ముప్పై సంవత్సరాల నుండి వారు పార్ట్ టైం జర్నలిస్ట్ గా కూడా పనిచేస్తున్నారు వారు వివిధ అనేక రకాలైనటువంటి కేసులను వాళ్ళు విజయాన్ని పొందుతూ ముందుకు పోతున్నారు ప్రధానంగా ఈ యొక్క దళితాల సంబంధించినటువంటి దళిత సాహిత్యానికి సంబంధించినటువంటి కానీ రాజ్యాంగ పరమైనటువంటి విషయాల పట్ల కానీ అనేకమైనటువంటి వాటిలో వారు అనేకమైనటువంటి వ్యాసాలు కూడా రాసినడం జరిగింది ముఖ్యంగా ఈ యొక్క డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ గారి యొక్క భారత రాజ్యాంగం అనేటువంటి అంశం మీద ఆ శ్రీ రవిచంద్ర గారిని మాట్లాడవలసిందిగా వారిని సాధారణంగా డాక్టర్ రవిచంద్ర థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ you must excuse me that i will speak more in english than in telugu no issue sir no issue sir question yeah. answers matram in telugu lo javab cheppagalutanu right kon sep tarvata ina telugu parni english lo maatladdame nayam anipistundi andaru nenu english lo maatladtunnanu um inni emla vasantalu annaru i uh, before i start how long am i required to speak and what is the session duration you can speak for one hour sir no issues one hour i matla okay mir 40 minutes the matla 45 minutes the whole session is for 45 minutes no 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 two and a half i will cut i will speak minimum and have a discussion for a longer period of time i'll take as many questions as are possible right sir because uh, one man speaking for a long time can be very boring especially if the speaker is me uh i believe that from 1950 till now how many ever summers or springs we have had much of what should have happened has happened there's no doubt about that but much more of what should not have happened has also happened there lies the indian tragedy today while we gather out of respect out of regard to arguably one of the and a person whose contribution to the indian republic cannot be underestimated we must realize that this indian republic kcr or no kcr has a lot of potholes in it 
Don't forget the chief justice of the country just three days ago made a comment that today even governments are criticizing the judicial officers. The executive has a stranglehold on every policy decision that takes place in this country. Don't forget that Narsimha Rao's success story is largely because he had a Manmohan Singh to back him up. Or vice versa. We have multiple examples in various states how the chief secretary, the chief minister are so pally that they don't even want to change them for some reason. Now, this is a reflection of how the Indian constitution is worked. Also, how the Indian legislature is constituted, what is its composition, how many people have criminal backgrounds, and how many people have criminal cases against them? And I draw a distinction between these two categories of people. And how effectively good has the Indian judicial system been? These are all reflections of how good the Indian constitution is. Interestingly, when the constituent assembly debates were going on, I do not remember who, I think it was Swami Satsananda who said, that if this constitution fails you, it means that we have failed the constitution and not vice versa. But today, when you still have a large section of India in poverty, and when laborers moved from South India back to their homes during COVID, they represented an economy that is lopsided. Many of them did not have food to eat and went back to their villages. And today it is the admitted case of the government of Telangana that real estate is a booming business in the state. Juxtaposition these two one next to the other. The migrant laborer is the man who comes to the state to do coolie work. He does not have food to eat for two months. He walks from here to Odisha and West Bengal. On the other hand, the urban development minister of the state claims that real estate is a booming business in the state. This is a reflection of the Indian constitution. I'm not even going to argue here whether it is the executive, whether it's the judiciary, whether it's the legislature. But we need to understand that the great constitution that we have can only be good as good as the people who run it. Therefore, I strongly believe that we don't have a great constitution, not because the constitution is bad but because it permitted that area where human error, human blundering, human arrogance, and human apathy to suffering have got the better of the letter and spirit of the Indian constitution. I may give you an impression that I'm talking more on the Indian constitution than I'm talking on the topic of the day that is Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. But no, I'm not. Because whenever I say the Indian constitution, I'm almost saying Dr. B.R. Ambedkar. Today, we know him as a jurist. We know him as an economist. And unfortunately, we know him even more as a Dalit leader. Now, the tragedy is, we look at Nehru as a Kashmiri Pandit. We look at Ambedkar as a Dalit. We look at Mahatma Gandhi as a Baniya. And this is one thing that Dr. Ambedkar fought for his with his life. 
today a cross section of india would like to see him as that leader who renounced hinduism and took to dalit movement and buddhism because he was a dalit in an increasingly polarized society we stick labels i remember many 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 years ago i think it was during the mandal agitation we i think dr mari chenna reddy was the chief minister of andhra pradesh and there's a statue of dr b r ambedkar near the tank bar and one day when the agitation was going on people decided to insult dr b r ambedkar by throwing up a ugly garland over him made of shoes and leather and uh, the agitators were called for a meeting with the chief minister I was a part of that meeting and after the chief minister twice said you can do this you can do this i told him in so many words sir dr b r ambedkar is not a dalit leader dr b r ambedkar is a national leader Dr B R Ambedkar does not belong to the community in which he was born also because he did not choose the community into which he was born He himself was a man who believed he was also instrumental in understanding that constitutional provision which said reservation for scheduled castes and scheduled tribes will be only there for 10 years can you today turn around and say therefore he did injustice to the dalits by saying it should be only for a certain specified period no therefore those who try to own up dr b r ambedkar please do not parochialize his contribution please do not restrict him his contributions to the country to the new indian republican polity by calling him a mere dalit leader or a leader who represented the interests of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes no he was not he was much more than that he played of course a very important role a pivotal role in the making of the indian constitution his knowledge of law is beyond question follow his constitutional debates you can understand the depth from which a man is speaking in a profession where which is characteristically elitist the legal profession by character is elitist ma tata lawyer main lawyer ne ma tata judge ne na judge ne ma koduku judge ne ma kala kalam vaste rajul lagu judgeulu రాజ్ కపూర్ ఫ్యామిలీ లాగా అయితే ఉంటాయి మంచిదా చెడు అనేది వి డోంట్ హ్యావ్ టు టాక్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ టుడే సఫైస్ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఫర్ మీ టు సే దట్ ఇన్ అన్ ఎలీటెస్ట్ వరల్డ్ లైక్ దిస్ ఎస్పెషలీ ఇన్ ద ఫార్టీస్ అండ్ ఇన్ ద ఫిఫ్టీస్ టు హ్యావ్ అ మ్యాన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద కమ్యూనిటీ దట్ హీ బిలాంగ్స్ టు నాట్ ఓన్లీ టు ఫైట్ ద ఛాలెంజెస్ దట్ హీ ఫేస్ అండ్ కమ్ అహెడ్ but to be accepted as an authority on the constitution was great work mane desham lo symbolism ki manam chaala maryada isthe okay lady ni president of india jssm ande mana ma desham lo enta ladies ki maryada isthe ani oka mata which continues to be the rape capital of the world man country lo jarigindanta rape mana desha plus suicide of women uh, female fetal side gani uh, dowry deaths gani manta oka pakka pettandi tisey kani poddana lesi aigiri nandi minandita nedine ni mama mahishwasuru mardini chadestam lakshmi swatam chadestam ivani jesesukuntam so symbolism ki manam chaala maryada isthe ఆ సింబాలిజం లోపల చూసినప్పుడు కూడా అంబేద్కర్ వాజ్ నాట్ ద సింబాలిక్ లీడర్ ఆఫ్ ద దలిత్స్ 
He was a vociferous leader. He was neither ashamed, nor was he apologetic of the cause that he was fighting. He made it very clear that there are voices in this country that are not being heard. There are voices in this country that require to be heard. And a non-inclusive growth of the Indian Republic will shatter the Indian Republic. And if you see today, the rumblings that you hear in our society largely come from these sectors of people who for whatever reason are not part of the inclusive growth that we all talk about. The consequence of which is that come April, come December, there are enough statutes to have rose garlands and marigold garlands for the Arambhita. We have enough colonies and sabas named after Dr. B. Arambhita. But even today, we have cup and chives in this country which do not accept the marriage of a Dalit and the marriage of a person in the order of marriage. Part of this is not merely because it's a Dalit versus forward community divide. It's also a social, economic vertical between all communities in India, not necessarily Dalit. But when it is Dalit, it is sharper and more dangerous. And when I say more dangerous, I mean it is more fatal to the Dalit who dares to marry. Because in our state, we know the case of Heman. He was a forward community man. He fell in love with a girl of another forward community. And he was killed. So it's not necessarily a marriage with a Dalit alone. But if it is a Dalit, it is even more serious in our country. And there lies the twist to the tale. Ambedkar was not afraid of saying that I belong to this community and it is necessary to listen to the voice of this community because if this community continues to be exploited, continues to be excluded from the growth models of this country, then all this GDP, GNP, NNP, PAP and all that we are talking about makes no sense. We can't create a new black regime in our country and talk about black exploitation and pray at Martin Luther King in America. But we do it. Our own NRIs who go to uh, wherever uh, Martin Luther, I think Atlanta or Georgia, wherever his uh, museum is, they'll all go and pray him, respect him as a civil liberties leader. But how many of them are willing to cross the line? I don't know. So, while we need to understand that Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was the chairperson of the Constituent Assembly, that he brought in all his experience into the making of the Indian Constitution to today polarize or to say that this constitution is the gift of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar to the country will not only be false, will not only be historically incorrect, will not only be damaging, but would be also insulting to the integrity and intelligence of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Please let us stop doing this. 1983 lo India World Cup Kapil Dev highest score highest score Madanlal highest score Madanlal bowling Vivian Richards wicket this kundo first ball the first over Balminder Singh Sandhu opening wicket this match 
క్రికెటే మన దేశంలో నైన్టీన్ ఎయిటీ త్రీలో అంత అయినప్పుడు ఎవరి వల్ల ఇది అయింది అని మనం చెప్పలేని పరిస్థితుల్లో ఉన్నప్పుడు ఒక రాజ్యాంగం మనము ఒక మనిషి వలన అయింది అని చెప్పడము మూర్ఖ యు కెన్ నాట్ హిస్టారికలీ సే దట్ ఇండియన్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఇస్ అ బర్త్డే గిఫ్ట్ given to the country of india on 26 january 1950 by b r ambedkar that can't work like that. was he a important contributor no doubts about it was he a more than average contributor to it no doubts about it was he an unparalleled contributor to the constitution of india no doubt about it but was he the only dancer we need to understand this difference there is a new tendency growing in india and this is again dangerous not because i believe in indira gandhi or rajiv gandhi or rahul gandhi or rahul gandhi or priyanka gandhi's son or who I, i i don't i hold no brief to the family i don't believe in the family but anybody who did not have 20 dinners with an nehru family is my man he is a great man anybody who's in a picture photograph with nehru or his granddaughter or great grandson is a bad person is not an indian throwing out this polarization of a country as that family versus all of us on that basis let us not respect ambedkar ambedkar deserves respect on his own ambedkar is not anti nehru or pro nehru ambedkar is ambedkar you don't have test him from the stand of the particular nehru ambedkar did not test himself on the standards of particular why are we doing that please therefore this new proprietorship i am anti congress therefore ambedkar is my man doesn't help congress in those days everybody was in congress everybody left congress everybody goes into congress today people who were in congress four years ago are union ministers don't we know him this is india if you have forgotten the name so this anybody anti nehru is a great leader in this country b r ambedkar and nehru had legal and political differences therefore ambedkar is great another topic nehru manchoda chedoda and politics correct ah kada ee vaati session lo mana maatladne avasaram em ledhu ambedkar by himself is a brilliant leader a patriot beyond discussion and a man whose legal acumen has stood in this country as a great test today as i'm talking to you one newspaper today said the two economies neighboring our country one country whom we tried to help as a consequence of which we lost one prime minister and another country with whom we are constantly at war one time or another both the economies are in shambles pakistan and sri lanka today if you look at the post world war countries you can hardly name 10 countries across the globe that started continued and are still functional democracies and this is one of the greatest contributions of dr b r ambedkar to this country again i am saying when i say this is one of the greatest contributions of dr b r ambedkar i am not saying it is the contribution of b r ambedkar alone he was a part of that cream that ensured that we have a system governed by the rule of law we have a constitutional form of government and it is that constitutional form of government which is being exploited which is being uh masqueraded sometimes sometimes being uh, 
abuse mustn't be our function of democracy, unlike most other third world countries that started off their trust with destiny in the name of democracy. Where do we place this greatness? The Nehruvians will tell you that it is because Nehru set the high standards of a Western style democracy in India. And that he was a mark, he was a exemplary democrat. People who follow, who don't like Nehru, they have started liking Patel, not because they know Patel, but because they don't like Nehru, Patel is a great man. And they will tell you that it is because Patel unified this country, we are a unified democracy. I don't understand how being a unified country becomes a unified democracy, but that's their logic. So it is. The downtrodden, the really socially backward downtrodden, namely the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, will say it's all because of BRM. My simple submission is it is because of all of them and a lot of unnamed martyrs who gave up their life or who spent their life for this great country. Move further. You must understand that unlike the new regime, which largely follows old regimes, progressive taxation concept ni manadesham lo chala varku series ka matla lindu Dr. B. He was one of those who said low income groups should not be taxed at all. then nobody has followed it. And every time new governments come, there are people who say, ah, this government will remove income tax completely because income tax contributes very little to the national uh, income. And then we'll have all kinds of financial wizards discussing at the end of the budget session, what is all the growth rate pattern? What are the parameters in double vetera, and the double vetera, the growth in the, the growth in the. End of the day, we all pay more, we all eat less, better roads, bigger buildings, the rich grow richer, the poor grow poor. In a country where poverty is alarmingly increasing, in a country whose growth rate is alarmingly falling, in a country where Unemployment is a huge challenge 60, 70 years after 1947. Ambedkar's argument opposing income tax for low income groups is contextually relevant even today. Give it a thought. Spare a thought. He contributed to the land revenue tax. He was a man who said excise duty. He was also, interestingly, I don't know how many political followers know. In compared even to economies, uh, democracies like America and Britain, universal adult franchise came to India at a single time. In all other countries, adult franchise came from men first and women later. Universal adult franchise became automatic in India thanks to B.R. That is when he spoke about in women empowerment, not by making one person as the president of India. <clears throat> one great aspect of the man is he did not speak too much. There was not too much of monkey bar. Here was a man who was spending more time doing what he believed was right for the country. Uh, yes, the Hindu bill was something that he wanted in the country. And those of you who believe that uh, Nehru was anti-Hindu, Patel was pro-Hindu. Please understand both Nehru and Patel opposed the Hindu bill. 
both of them did. What would have happened if again there's this question, Patel Prime Minister he would have done greater than Nehru? No, you don't live history with ifs and buts. History is a given. Even Mughal India would not have been together, forget Indian India. British action, this whole dominion of India may not have been together, we don't know. So you don't live history by hypothesis. So to answer whether Ambedkar would have been a better Prime Minister of India than Nehru or Patel or somebody else or Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad or Moraji Desai or uh, Lal Bahadur Shasti, I have no answer to those questions. Because I believe that very approach to history is suspect. He, as a labor minister, successfully led to the reduction of working hours from 12 hours to 8 hours. And that's why it's gone today. Because today we are all bending backwards to support outsourcing in our country. And why do they outsource? Because labor in India is cheap. And what are the working hours of multinationals in our country? 10 hours, 12 hours, 14 hours. They don't say work for 14 hours. They say this is the work given to you. You'll have to do it today. We have no labor commissioners who look at the foreign market in our country today at all. Salute to B.R. Ambedkar who said, bring it down from 12 to 8 hours. Maybe today, if all the people who are sitting and celebrating the birthday of uh, Dr. B.R., if they can bring about that change of ensuring all multinationals work only for eight hours, we have done enough for the memory of Dr. B.R. Let's do that. There was a man who spoke about employment exchanges. Today, government does not employ anybody. Nobody wants to apply for government. Multinationals lo udyogam dorkakapote empty chesi. Call office lo double leoche jitam la kunda akarapuda udyogam rakunda ute. Apudu yepudo, aide loko, nalgen loko, okasari public service commission of tough exam petty, dantra padi case in jergi, dantra migil nodu, government service in jergi. Public sector undertakings, Musa Stunam, Amestuna. So, what are those employment exchanges of which Dr. B.R. Ambedkar spoke so greatly? What are we doing? The, the, the great Democrat in Ambedkar dies with our democracy because today we are hardly a functional democracy. We just talk democracy here, there, loudly. The great man who spoke about poverty versus the rich. Look at the taxation system in this country. So, Ambedkar's gone for six days. The man who spoke about a religion that does so much of vertical exploitation and he moved to Buddhism because he found it a liberal space. What do we do? Mark Wortland in a case, Sriman Narayana Analna, Ramachandra Murthy Analna, Vishnu Sahasrana Mam Chadwalna Chadao Kurada, Ramuru Penlilo. GL Swami, okay, Grama Devatan Titadama, Titakura, Adi Epurita, Nalpa Elamun, the Titta, Ival in the Pochindi. Even Manadeshan, when I'm chasing Rajakia. And you Rajakia chest to chest to Ari April Chindi by Biara Medical Birthday on the Manamok all day this Kundam and of a quarter of Japes Marpal Manjas. This will have to stop. As a Labour member in the Viceroy's Executive Council, Ambedkar framed laws on women labour in India, which include mines maternity, women labour welfare, women and child labour protection, maternity benefits for women, restoration of ban on women and for underground coal workers, and equal pay for equal work in respect. The equal pay for equal uh, what 
మాదిగన మాలన దళిత ఎస్టీన అలా చూద్దామా రాజ్యాంగంని ఆయననే పూర్తిగా రాసి మహాభారతం ని వ్యాసుడు డిక్టేట్ చేస్తే గణపతి రాసుకున్నట్లు ఒక మూఢ నమ్మకంతో మనము ఈయననే అంత చేసేసాడు అని అనుకోవడమా లేకపోతే ఆయనకి కావలసిన ఆయనకి ఇవ్వాల్సిన మర్యాదతో ఆయనకి ఇచ్చి ఆయన ఆలోచనలని ముందు సాగించడమా ఐ లీవ్ యూ విత్ దిస్ థాట్ బికాస్ ఇన్ ద ఆన్సర్ టు దట్ క్వశ్చన్ లైస్ ద ట్రూ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఆఫ్ డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్ Thank you very much. Sir, I think you are muted. I can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Sumarga Miru, Nalabai, I do Nimshala Samayam Patu, Nalabai Nimshala Samayam Patu, Dr. B.R. Ambedkar, Bartha Rajanga, Mane 20, Vishyam Vida, Chala Lothay Net 20, Adhyayan and Jesaru, Mukhyanga, Vishle Shinchana Mane 20, Jari Gindi, భారత రాజ్యాంగానికి సంబంధించినటువంటి విషయాలే ఈ మధ్య కాలంలో మూడు రోజుల క్రితం భారత ప్రధాన న్యాయమూర్తి అయినటువంటి వారు ప్రభుత్వాలు న్యాయ వ్యవస్థను విమర్శిస్తున్నాయనేటువంటి విషయాన్ని చెప్తూనే భారతదేశంలో పేదరికం ఇంకా ఉంది అనేటువంటిది విషయాన్ని మరీ పర్టికులర్ గా చెప్తేనే దళిత్ అంబేద్కర్ అనేటువంటి దళితుడు కాదు ఆయన ఒక జాతీయవాది అనేటువంటి విషయాన్ని పర్టికులర్ గా మరొకసారి చెప్తూనే అంబేద్కర్ గారికి పూలదండలు వేయడం వేయచ్చు కానీ నేటికి కాప్ పంచాయతీలు ఇంకా ఈ దేశంలో జరుగుతున్నాయి అనేటువంటి విషయాన్ని మరొకసారి గుర్తు చేస్తూ వారి యొక్క ఆ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ వారి యొక్క ముఖ్యమైనటువంటి విషయాలను ప్రధానంగా ఈ యొక్క నలభై ఐదు నిమిషాల సమయం లోపల మీరు విశ్లేషించడం జరిగింది మీకు మా తెలంగాణ జనవేదిక తరఫున ప్రత్యేకమైనటువంటి ధన్యవాదాలు సార్ ఆ ఇప్పుడు ముఖ్యంగా ఇప్పుడు ప్రధానంగా ప్రొఫెసర్ సుధాకర్ గారు వెరీ క్లోజ్లీ వాచింగ్ ద డిస్కోర్స్ ఆఫ్ మిస్టర్ రవిచందర్ ఎ వెరీ వెరీ క్రిటికల్ అప్రైజల్ ఆఫ్ డాక్టర్ అంబేద్కర్ and uh, his contemporary relevance i could find another point is that it is something like that sensitizing the informed citizenry as the great person the contemporary society and another also important thing that i could be able to understand is that the entire lecture is an abstract in manner unless let me see the people who are listening has some kind of broad view about ambedkar probably there may be a lot of linking with the missing links and uh, while on one aspect i would like to respond and it uh, dr ambedkar and the reservation for only 10 years it's a reservation for 10 years is specifically mentioned in constitution only in order to develop politically development upliftment of people and the and one must look into the socio economic and the other aspects at the particular contemporary period when the entire uh, constituent assembly consisting of very many the, the configuration itself is such that that many people have reposed confidence on dr b r ambedkar not basing and never ever i had been going through whenever i kind find time into the cad constituent assembly debates where not a single person has criticized the ambedkar basing upon the community and other thing i would like to tell us the one one nazimuddin ahmed i believe 
Who is critical about Ambedkar on each and every issue? And people may think that he was he was summarily criticizing. But other thing that I would like to uh, that that I saw from the other angle is that people should be there should be people who has to who criticize the things, and a critic will always be criticizing only basing on the future things which are not is aspired. Now on this, I would like to link about this ten years reservation and that of Ambedkar's vision, maybe, and it is written that in the existing circumstances. When we became, we, when we born new, a new country has taken birth. The assumption is that in another decade or so, probably politically, these downtrodden people may equip themselves. This is a kind of social change, social change. Samajika parvartan antanga thamu. Atanti upa padi samatralo pura bausha samajika parvartan dargosu. Andulo daritru leda nimna mar kana valu the outcasted, broken caste, or whatever things you call it. And which is a system that is system generated evil, which is existing since time immemorial in a chatur varna vyavastha. And his vision appears to be wrong that in a decade or so, people may be politically empowered, and that has been put in the constitution. And after ten years, it was proved that the estimation of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was not correct. So therefore, can I interrupt for one minute? Yeah. Can I interrupt? Uh, two things I wanted to tell you. One, I did not say it should be for 10 years. Yes, My really? problem is even today they are novels. Uh, that's what I, I have come to that point. It I is... think Dr. Ambedkar included all of us underestimated the backwardness of the Dalits in this country and the refusal to bring them into the mainstream after 70 years. Ravi Chandra Garu, my vision is Ambedkar was the after all, he's a human being. Correct. Might be, Correct. might be errant because his understanding may be such that because he was being respected much in the constitutional debates and probably it's in only 10 years, there's going to be a sea change, but unfortunately, it would do nothing. So, therefore, in view of the constraint that is a past that, that it is there in the constitution, it is a compelling condition to enhance not more than 10 years. So that is how. For the last 70 years, it has been in class, in class and in my classroom. I say that this kind of you know, reservation policy should have to be continued since for some more time. Some more time means it may continue for century success. Because so far as the, the, the present experience shows that the empowerment of these people could not be achieved in a decade or so. So therefore, it naturally has to be increased on this point. America's estimation appears to be wrong. He thought that it may be, be yeah, everything would be set out, set out. So therefore, his estimation is wrong. And of course, it is being continued at 70 years, 8 years, 90 years. It will, it will be going on until the, uh, till really we can able to achieve what we are thinking of, what is the constitutional mandate. And other thing is, the, this sea this change I could able to find normally that America is being associated with only downtrodden people today, but never in the Constitutional Assembly or, and in his writings and his contribution, never he has been actually, he was not struggling hard or so far as writing of the fundamental law of the land on the straits. But afterwards, so because of uh, because the fact that ours is a traditional society and more particularly Hindu Christian society, which is committed for a kind of Chatur Varna Vyavastha, and Panchamas are nowhere finding in this four Varnas, Avarna, Asprusya, outcasted, broken caste, and all these things have been experienced. But in spite of all those things also, though you have got a lot of information with you about the contribution of Dr. B. R. Amerikar on each and everything, but maybe I got to understand is that maybe due to certain constraints, you could not elaborate this. Like, for example, his works, like the value of rupee or something like that, are the Central Bank of India, that is, Reserve Bank of India, and his prominence in importance, economic aspect, and many more things. But there are many more things are there. Yes. But unfortunately, the thing is that we are only concerned only with that of reservation policy or favorable treatment, this and that. In fact, this favorable treatment is something which is supposed to be there when there are inequalities are persisting and existing. 
no uh, i can understand uh, Mr. chandar uh, you could have continued something more elaborately uh, so I that i don't <laughs> i don't believe that i should speak for such a long time nene chaala sep maatladane oka feeling na ante em kada nenu dalita vargalu gurinchi chaala అంబేద్కర్ గారు చేసింది తప్పు అని అన్నే లేదు అండ్ ఈ రోజు కూడా నన్ను అడుగుతే మనం రిజర్వేషన్స్ ని సరిగ్గా పట్టించుకోలేదు దాని వి హెవ్ నాట్ ఫాలోడ్ ఇట్ ఇన్ లెటర్ అండ్ స్పిరిట్ దట్ ఈస్ వై ఇట్ ఇస్ ఫెయిల్డ్ ఇన్ అవర్ కంట్రీ నాట్ బికాస్ ద మెడికేషన్ ఇస్ బ్యాడ్ సార్ దిస్ ఇస్ ఫేవరబుల్ ట్రీట్మెంట్ ఈ సంథింగ్ which has to look from the sociological correct, point of view correct, correct. and the very usage of word reservation is something irksome it's correct. not easy it's not it's a kind of thing when any if you cannot apply the rule of equality before equality among the unequals this is so i have said before la your article put in cannot be referred to that's what you cannot krishna ayer said treating unequals as equals is inequality that's what so equality class is not a universal class as per article 14 so it has to apply only among the equals and when there is an inequality persists and exists in society in such cases the so called the so called this one the favorable treatment are is supposed to be there which we normally called as a, a reservation policy or this or that so thank you very much thank you thank you Professor. subsequently maybe depending upon situation i may also be coming in and interacting thank you thank you Professor. జస్టిస్ సిస్టమ్ సో టెరబుల్ in spite of many in the of many in the constitution assembly as well as framing being lawyers maybe that is the reason <laughs> <laughs> but that's all the light like aside no what happens is this as i told you in the very beginning we have a very good constitution do mana miru ee manchi hospitals vellandi doctor chaala manchi odu untadu hospital chaala ba untadi పారామెడికల్ ఉంటాయి దానివల్ల మనుషులు చచ్చిపోతుంది ఓవర్ బిల్డింగ్ అవుతుంది ఈ వ్యవస్థలో ఏమేమి ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ ఉన్నాయి అని మనం ఏ రోజు కనుగలుగుతామో అవన్నీ న్యాయ వ్యవస్థలో కనిపిస్తున్నాయని మీకు తెలిసిపోతాయి ఈ న్యాయ వ్యవస్థని నడిపే వాళ్ళు ఎవరు మీరు నేను ఈ దేశంలో పుట్టి ఈ దేశంలో పెరిగి ఈ దేశంలో చదువుకుని ఈ దేశంలో మిగతా వాక్స్ ఆఫ్ లైఫ్ లో ఉన్న తప్పులతో బ్రతికి పైకి వచ్చిన వాళ్ళమే అక్కడ ఉన్న వాళ్ళు సో వాళ్ళు అక్కడ పోయిందనే వాళ్ళు దేవతలుగా మారుతాయి అనుకోవడము వాళ్ళు చాలా బాగా న్యాయాలు చేస్తే న్యాయం చేసి మనకు అందరికీ న్యాయం అవుతుంది అనుకోవడం మనము ద డే వి స్టాప్ worshipping demi gods this legal system will improve professor vijay lakshman sir can you hear me yeah, yeah. madam please sir yeah. please madam i was just referring to the, the last draft paper submitted by dr ambedkar దాంట్లో కొన్ని పదాలు చాలా ఇంప్రెసివ్ గా కనపడ్డాయి ఐ జస్ట్ యాడ్ టు ప్రొఫెసర్ సుధాకర్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నజీరుద్దీన్ హుస్ వర్డ్ ది అంబేద్కర్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ నాట్ యాజ్ అ డ్రాఫ్టింగ్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ బట్ ఇట్స్ అ డ్రిఫ్టింగ్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఇది ఒక చాలా పెయిన్ఫుల్ గా అనిపిస్తుంది ఎందుకంటే ఇవాళ డెబ్బై ఏళ్ల తర్వాత కూడా మనం ఆ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ నే ఫాలో చేస్తున్నాం కాబట్టి అది ఒకటి డ్రిఫ్టింగ్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ అవ్వడానికి వీలు కాదు ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ డ్రాఫ్టింగ్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ అని అనాల్సిందే రెండవ వర్డ్ ఆయన ఏం వాడారంటే ఈ వర్డ్ సెక్యులర్ అనేది ఆయన టైంలో రాలేదు మన ప్రియంబుల్లో కెన్ హియర్ మీ 
యా మేడం మేడం ప్లీజ్ సో సెక్యులర్ వర్డ్ మనకి ఫార్టీ సెకండ్ అమెండ్మెంట్ లో వచ్చింది అంతకు ముందు సెక్యులర్ అనే వర్డ్ అవసరం రాలేదో మరి ఎందుకు యాడ్ చేయలేదని కాన్స్టిట్యూంట్ అసెంబ్లీలో డిస్కషన్స్ జరుగుతున్నప్పుడు కూడా సెక్యులర్ అనే వాడ మాట పదం వాడాలి అనే డిబేట్ చాలా జరిగింది ఫైనలీ లాస్ట్ మూమెంట్ లో ఇది తేలింది దాంట్లో నుంచి సెక్యులర్ అనే వర్డ్ తీసేశారు సెక్యులర్ సోషలిస్ట్ ఆ మాటలు తీసేశారు తర్వాత అఫ్కోర్స్ నైన్టీన్ ఫార్టీ సెకండ్ అమెండ్మెంట్ బట్ వైల్ స్పీకింగ్ అబౌట్ ది వాలిడిటరీ సెషన్ డాక్టర్ అంబేద్కర్ సేస్ he compares the two words religious based politics or lekapothe national feeling ga ee rendu padalallo edi supersede avutundi anedi oka pradhanamaina atuvanti discussion ani pettinattu manaku literature lo telustundi so when people go with religion it he concludes that we lost our freedom అందుకని దేశాన్ని దేశంగా చూడండి కానీ ఎప్పుడైతే మతం ఓవర్టేక్ చేస్తుందో మన స్వతంత్రం అనేటువంటిది లేదు అని చెప్పేసి జరగడం జరిగింది కానీ ఇవాళ మనం చూస్తుంటే వర్డ్ సెక్యులర్ పెట్టడం వల్ల నష్టం జరిగిందా పెట్టకపోతే బాగుండేదా ఇవాళ మతపరమైనటువంటి పొలిటికల్ పార్టీస్ రావడం వల్ల దేశాన్ని మనకు మనమే తక్కువ చేసుకొని మన స్వాతంత్రం పోగొట్టుకుంటున్నామా అనేది నిజంగా అంబేద్కర్ గారి ఎంత ముందు చూపు అనేది అర్థమయ్యే ఆయన సెక్యులర్ వర్డ్ పెట్టలేదేమో అని నేను అనుకుంటున్నాను ఇంకొకటి ఏమిటి అంటే ఆయన హీ కంపేర్డ్ విత్ ది అమెరికన్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఇన్ జఫర్సన్ మాటలలో చెప్తారు అంటే ఎప్పుడైతే ఈ ఫండమెంటల్ రైట్స్ కి రెస్ట్రిక్షన్స్ ఉండాలి ఫండమెంటల్ రైట్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ ఇన్కార్పొరేటెడ్ ఇన్ ది కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఆర్ నాట్ అబ్సల్యూట్ అనేది మనం ఫిఫ్టీన్ నుంచి చూస్తూనే ఉన్నాం వి ఆర్ నాట్ అబ్సల్యూట్ దే గో విత్ రెస్ట్రిక్షన్స్ మరి రెస్ట్రిక్షన్స్ తీయాలా ఎప్పుడు తీస్తారు ఎందుకు తీయాలి సి దీస్ వర్డ్స్ వర్ రియలీ ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ ఇన్ ఈజ్ లాస్ట్ స్పీచ్ అయితే ఈ రోజు వరకు వాటిని యాడ్ చేస్తున్నాం కానీ తీసేయడం జరగట్లేదు అందుకని ఫండమెంటల్ రైట్స్ మీద ఆయన చాలా ఫర్మ్ గా ఉన్నట్టు అనిపించింది మరి సార్ మీరు కూడా యూ హ్ ఎన్లైటెండ్ అస్ అండ్ వెరీ డిఫరెంట్ అనాలిసిస్ ఐ కుడ్ హియర్ ఫ్రమ్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ సార్ In our country, very often when we amended the constitution to a fundamental rights, we restricted the fundamental rights. In the whole Nehruvian era, if you see from the 50s, Golatnath and all this case law, uh, what happened was, we were historically a country which was poor. And the Nehruvian socialism, saw a conflict between laser fair economics on the one hand and growth modules on the other and perhaps that is why we had a judiciary which thought that for india the nehruvian socialism was a necessity for the growth engines adhe inta varaku correct enta varaku tappu anedi adi vere sangati ee paristhitilo ivval em ayindi ఏ కారణాల వలన మనము ఫండమెంటల్ రైట్స్ ని రెస్ట్రిక్ట్ చేశాము ఆ కారణాలకి కాకుండా వేరే రాజకీయ కారణాలకి వాడుకుంటూ అక్కడ సోషలిజం రాలేదు లేదా ఫేరు మిగిలలేదు i have a question can you throw some light on the relationship between mahatma gandhi and uh, ambedkar the dr b r ambedkar you may obviously know that uh, they were both critics of one another 
We also know that uh, there is a theory that is the round table conference in London. Both said, I'm, I represent the Lutz. And people see, some people, some there are sections of people who see Gandhi as the villain. In the and there are others who see Ambedkar as the villain. So these are narratives. The fact remains that both were great patriots. The fact remains that both had respect for one another. The fact remains that both of them had the interests of the country in place. Nobody called the other anti-Indian. Nobody called the other names. They had ideological differences. And I think two intellectuals or two great patriots like the Mahatma and Dr. Biyadi were entitled to those opinions. I would believe that Gandhi's look at many of these things on untouchability was seen as an outsider's view, as a condescending vertical. While B.R. Ambedkar was one who, who had suffered and grown up and therefore he knew he knew where the shoe pinches. But that does not drop Gandhi of any of his beliefs and his greatness. Yes, politically, they came from two different ends of the divide. Uh, Professor Vishnu uh, Charan Choudhury, sir. Sir, Professor Vishnu Charan Choudhury. Professor. Choudhury, sir. sir. Am I audible? Sir, sir, please. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, do I have time? Can I speak for 10 minutes? Okay, sir, please. Uh, but today the discussion is on Ambedkar and the Constitution. Am I audible? Am I audible? Sir, sir. Yes, yes. Mr. Vishnu Charan, you're audible. Yes. Now so it is a very interesting. Uh, topic because uh, Ambedkar's birthday is on the next 14th and the nation will celebrate his birthday. Ambedkar is a great thinker, a genius, a philosopher, a revolutionary, a jurist for excellence, a prolific writer, a social activist, a critic, a statesman, an economist, a humanist to the core, and a constitutional expert, a visionary. He had made signal contribution in making the constitution. That is why we call him as the father of the Indian constitution. Why we call him as the, the father of the Indian constitution? There are two, three reasons attributed to that. Number one, he was the chairman of the drafting committee of the constitution. There were other members who were there in the committee and the prominent lawyers were there. And the advisor was Benagal and Arishima Rao, a member of the coveted ICS. And the draftsman was Asan Banerjee. Secondly, he was defending on every issue, any question that is being put in the Constituent Assembly by the honorable members of the Constituent Assembly. He was defending every issue. Let me. I'm tempted to quote some of his uh, uh, observation. In reply to the criticism of over-centralization of the Constitution, Ambedkar said, I quote, a serious complaint is made on the ground that there is too much of centralization and that the states have been reduced to municipalities. It is clear that this view is not only an exaggeration, but is also founded on a a misunderstanding of what exactly the Constitution contracts to do so. Second observation was on the federal provisions. Ambedkar said, I quote, however much you may deny power to the center, it is difficult to prevent the center from be becoming strong. Conditions in the modern world are such that centralization of power is inevitable. Then uh, defending on the uh, Constitution that uh, it was a uh, uh, the members of the Constituent Assembly or the Constituent Assembly itself has referred to plagiarism, Ambedkar defended. As to the uh, accusation that the draft constitution was reproduced a good part of the provisions of the Government of India Act 1935, I make no apologies. 
there is nothing to be ashamed of in borrowing. It involves no plagiarism. Nobody holds any patent rights in the fundamental ideas of the Constitution. What I'm sorry about is that provisions taken from the Government of India Act 1935 relate to the details of administration. I agree that administrative details should have no place in the Constitution. I wish every much, very much that the drafting committee could see its way to avoid their inclusion in the Constitution. But this is to be said on the necessity which justifies their inclusion. Then uh, also the working of the Constitution said, I feel this is workable. It is flexible and it is strong enough to hold the country together, both in peacetime and in war time. Indeed, if things go wrong under the new constitution, the reason will be not that we had a bad constitution, but we will have to say that man is failing. Like that on every issue, on direct concerted policy, on fundamental rights, each article he defended, very successfully defended to the satisfaction of the members in the conference. Coming to the other aspect of what is contribution, you know, our uh, guest speaker was very vividly describing all these points. But uh, the first thing that uh, we have to give uh, uh, credit to, to Ambedkar is, he openly said, I am entering the constant assembly not for any power, but to safeguard the interests of the scheduled caste. Because I'm opposed to the caste system, lock, stock, and barrel, and the caste system in India provides for social inequality, and particularly untouchability, which is a stigma of the Hindu social order. So he was a great proponent of social justice, number one. Regarding social justice, Ambedkar said, I quote him, my social philosophy may be said to be enshrined in three words, liberty, equality, and fraternity. You also know that the contours of Ambedkar's social justice vision are twofold. First, before the independent constitution of India, and second, as reflective in the constitution of India. In the first place, Ambedkar's endeavors were directed towards the awakening of the depressed classes. This is very important. Their increasing consciousness of the basic human rights and securing the political, social, and educational safeguards to the untouchables. His philosophy was occupied with social amelioration, political enlightenment, and spiritual awakening. awakening. So Ambedkar's vision was to create social transformation, you know, to uphold the need of human dignity, equality, and liberty, rights, and civil facilities. So his life's mission, as you said, was to raise the depressed classes socially and economically to the status of human beings. That is the concept of Manuski. Even the word Dalit that we are uh, using, I was referring to the uh, meaning of the word Dalit. Dalit. Dalit means the people who are grounded. That is the meaning of Dalit. Now nobody applies Shadlu Kastha, these Harijan, these words. Regarding the other uh, contribution of Ambedkar was, he uh, supported the reservation. Reservation is otherwise known as the uh, protective discrimination. It is also known as positive discrimination. It is also known as affirmative action. He defended saying that since for generations, these classes of people were deprived of their justice and uh, their due. Uh, afterwards also, I may um, give the example of Babu Jagajivan Ram, who was the greatest Dalit leader after independence. He was asked, Mr. Ram, do you favor reservation? He said, reservation has been uh, required because injustice has been done. And he gave the example, look, a Chamar's, uh, a Chamar, while uh, doing the, the, the occupation, he may not be given respect, but if a shuttle caste boy becomes a Thanedra, uh, officer in charge of police station, a higher caste man goes to salute. Uh, remember a situation where a shuttle caste man or a Dalit becomes the district magistrate, what will happen? His illustrious daughter, Meera Kumar, former speaker of the Lok Sabha once said, reservation is not somebody's gift, not somebody's charity. It is the demand, it is due to the shuttle caste. And so long as inequality will continue in the Indian society, 
reservation will continue. So originally the question was, it was for 10 years. Every 10 years we are expanding. So critics of uh, reservation, they put different aspects. So pro-reservation, anti-reservation. In my opinion, this reservation has become totally politicized. They don't look into the philosophy why reservation was given, but political parties, they try to make twist to create vote banks and they try to pollute the entire atmosphere. My suggestion would be, as Ambedkar said, the schedule caste must be following three things. The slogan was organize, educate, and educate. If these three, three things will go simultaneously, I think Dalit empowerment is possible. But uh, during the last 70 years or more, 75 years, what we have seen, only a fraction of the scheduled caste or scheduled tribes or those who are getting reservation, they have come up to the ladder. But the uh, people at the base level who are landless laborers, they are suffering out of poverty, ignorance, they don't have access to health, education, and quality life. Thank you, sir. With these, I finish my comments. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, if anybody have any questions, please raise your hands. I will allow you to, I'll unmute you so that you can ask any questions to Sri Rav Chandra. So I have a question. If it, if it is possible, you please try to enlighten us. Uh, in spite of so much reservation and all these things we are talking, why there is a demand for categorization of the Dalit sector, Dalit sections? Uh, I didn't get the question. Can you repeat it? Yeah. In spite of all these reservations and all that, 70 years, why there is a demand for categorization of Dalits? If you have destroyed here, I think <coughs> the answer is what he said. Reservations haven't, it's only been a political drama in this country. And if you look at uh, uh, in Andhra Pradesh, for example, erstwhile state of Andhra Pradesh, the then government tried to categorize the Dalits because it, it was the case of the Madigas that all the reservation went in the name of Malas, and the Madhikas were not getting reservation. So, the I hate to use this expression, they became the new Brahmins of that group. The translation of the philosophy of reservation in this country has been pathetic. And therefore, the have-nots who have not got a benefit out of the concept are saying, please redoctor, redoctor this institutional therapy so that the medication reaches the needy. James, do you have anything? Yeah, I, um, I would like to uh, comment on the debate of uh, uh, inequalities, I think uh, it, it would be more apt to measure them in, uh, in terms of uh, uh, wealth transfer than, than, than jobs. Uh, I mean, this is a comment uh, because if you look at the, uh, how much wealth is accumulated in, uh, in only 1%, uh, of the country, one person population of the country, the accumulation, and and then the how it is uh, distributed across uh, sections. I think it, it tells a lot. Uh, I think it, it, there should be more focus uh, on that. And, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Ravi Chandar. It was uh, I, we preferred if we had we have we had spoken a little longer. We were really enjoyed your eloquence, uh, your uh, not just uh, the great depth, uh, but the grip on language. We really enjoyed the, uh, uh, the way you, you delivered. And um, so, so one, one question, uh, if, you, if I may, if I can 
answer if you, if you can i'm trying to articulate this uh, question uh, you were saying um, that um, you know if the if we fail, if this constitution fails as it was a comment I, by by some leader, yes, leader yes, yes. if we fail the constitution uh, it is not because uh, it is because that we have failed it i think we have said that uh, in, in those lines the constitution has failed us but because we have failed the constitution which as it is we have failed the constitution so, sir I, i and also you have said that at, at you know at the at, at that juncture uh, of uh, of and the polity of india 70 75 years ago at that very important uh, juncture the leaders we had were very progressive uh, so uh, and uh, unfortunately we are bereft of them we don't find them today uh, here and uh, i i would like to ask you you know um, a question not exactly on the subject here but are would would are there any leaders like that today in today's uh, polity and and since you are you are <laughs> i don't mind I mean, if you can name some names because you're not shy about naming names please no i don't shy about names name. and I, i can't find one the messiah is yet to come the messiah is to come and uh, right uh, i think you know maybe you know like you know in various fields uh for example you know we had the golden era of film music in the 60s and in the 70s we don't have it today. like that we had a great leadership potential starting from the gokhale tilak era right up to the nehru shastri era but after that it's been a vacuum sometimes historically also nothing grows under the banyan tree and today there is not so much a devoid of leadership as there is a devoid of moral fabric in this country mm. now in a country that suffers a moral vacuum the best of leaders will fail into insignificance on the other hand men like lal bahadur shastri i i take that example without fear of contradiction i don't think historically his 18 months was the greatest period of history economically if you look at his growth parameters during the 18 months it was not great but we will be thankful for him because he was honest. he placed honesty integrity outrightness so high in the priorities of things and that is why the shastri era of a mediocre prime minister is much greater than a brilliant prime minister like manmohan singh who is one of the worst prime ministers that we have had in recent years the conflict is not so much about the quality of leadership but it is about leadership the quality of the moral fabric of contemporary absolutely there absolutely. lies <laughs> and go to the pune pact which somebody had asked me see what had happened during the round table conference was both of them were saying i am the representative i am representative this led to uh one of gandhi's many fasts and people began to worry that if gandhi died that we could be blamed for it so they tried to hold up with his arsenal for logic and reason and all but you know how gandhi was so after four days of fast on september 24 1932 met this is gandhi at yaravada and then enter signs what is called the pune pact where they agree that they will not have separate electorate but they will have that was in answer to a question about the pune pact that somebody had asked yes uh, thank you yeah one raised hand is there ashok kumar gundu uh, sir good evening sir Uh, sir we are uh, very much uh, interested sir we loved your uh, wonderful lecture sir i have a uh, doubt uh, that is sir since our so is a democratic uh, culture democratic constitution as everyone knows uh, democracy is a great concept democracy democracy is a very very 
uh, broader word when it includes itself a uh, socialism and secularism and other things what is the necessity of having again secularism and socialism in a preamble sir don't we think that political sir. drama sir thank you sir okay. not at all necessary political drama thank you uh, ashok babu penli uh, namaskaram sir uh, ivalte uh, ivalte session chala baagundi ముఖ్యంగా డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ కాంట్రిబ్యూషన్ టు ద మేకింగ్ ఆఫ్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఇండియన్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ అండ్ హిజ్ కాంట్రిబ్యూషన్ దళిత్ కోణంలో ఎట్లా వాళ్ళు హైలైట్ చేసి ఓన్ చేసుకుంటున్నారు ఇప్పుడే చెప్పినట్టు ప్రతి ఆస్పెక్ట్లో పొలిటికల్ యాంగిల్ నెక్స్ట్ సమాజంలో వాళ్ళకు ఒక గుర్తింపు రావాలి ఒక పొజిషన్ పొందాలి అనే కోణంలోనే జరుగుతున్నది దానికోసం అనవసరమైన ఖర్చులు అనవసరమైన రాద్ధాంతాలు చేస్తున్నట్టు కనపడుతున్నది ముఖ్యంగా ఇప్పుడు అందరికీ ఓటు హక్కు ఈ ఓట్లను ఎట్లా మనం సంపాదించుకోవాలి పవర్లో కూర్చోవాలి లేదా భవిష్యత్తులో మళ్ళీ రిటైన్ చేసుకోవాలి అనే దానికే ఈ ప్రయత్నాలు ఈ లీడర్షిప్ జరుగుతున్నది యాక్చువల్గా రాజ్యాంగాన్ని అమలు పరచడానికి యంత్రాంగం చేయాల్సిన పనిని నాయకులు ఏ విధంగా నిర్వీర్యం చేస్తున్నారో మనం మేధావులుగా ఆలోచించాల్సిన అవసరం ఉంది నెక్స్ట్ ఆ సెక్యులరిజం అనే కాన్సెప్ట్ ఇవాళ ఏ విధంగా ఒక బ్రాండ్ ఇమేజ్ తోటి ఒక పోలరైజ్డ్ అంటే మతం మతంలో పుట్టిన కాబట్టి ఈ పలానా పార్టీ కాకుండా వేరే దానికి నేను చెప్పడానికి కానీ అంగీకరించడం కానీ లేకపోతే అందులో పనిచేయడానికి కానీ పోతే నన్ను ఓన్ చేసుకునే పరిస్థితి లేదు అనే రోజులు వచ్చినాయి అట్లా అయితే భవిష్యత్తులో యూనియన్ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా ఎట్లా విచ్ఛిన్నమవుతుంది అనేది కూడా చూడాల్సిన అవసరం ఉన్నదని ఈ సందర్భంగా తెలియజేస్తూ నాకు ఈ అవకాశం ఇచ్చినందుకు ధన్యవాదాలు థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ అశోక్ బాబు గారు సార్ ఇంకెవరైనా మిత్రులు మాట్లాడేవారు ఎవరైనా ప్రశ్నలు సార్ ను సమాధాన ప్రశ్నలు కానీ ఏమైనా డౌట్స్ ఉంటాడు ఒక క్వశ్చన్ అది శ్రీకాంత్ అడిగాడు ఐ థింక్ రాజమౌళి గారు మీరు ఏమైనా అడుగుతారా కుమార్ అందరికి నమస్కారం అండి ఇప్పుడు ముందుగా అందరికి శ్రీరామనవమి శుభాకాంక్షలు తెలుపుకుంటూ అడ్వకేట్ రవిచంద్ర గారికి థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ ఫర్ ఎలాబరేట్ అవుట్లుక్ టువర్డ్స్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్ రియలీ యా అంబేద్కర్ వాజ్ నో డౌట్ ఈజ్ ఈజ్ అ ఫాదర్ ఆఫ్ కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ అండ్ సాక్రిఫైస్ హిజ్ లైఫ్ టు ద కంట్రీ అండ్ టు ద కాన్స్టిట్యూషన్ నో డౌట్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ బట్ ఇన్ హిజ్ లాస్ట్ డేస్ he he his mind and his thoughts uh, were much attracted to buddhism and he himself converted to buddhism sir uh, what's the reason behind it may i know it because he used to follow some karma siddhanta like that what what is what's the reason sir uh, the journey to religion 
is a personal journey. What ticks off the clock in a person is an extremely personal thing. And if you look at the perspective from a Ambedkar uh, stance, you would perhaps say that the kind of Hinduism that was being practiced in India then, which is far better than what is being practiced today. Absolutely. Perhaps, huh? Absolutely. Uh, was perhaps hurting the dignity, if I can use that word expression very carefully. It is this search for dignity, this search for a liberal human space, which is also the search for an inner peace. You know, men at 70 don't die without their God. They find gods. If they are not in peace with the gods that they know, then they may misunderstand the gods they don't as the perfect gods. Are they perfect gods? Are they imperfect gods? I don't know. I hope I had an answer to your question. Because when a man changes his faith, he's not changing his faith from FAT to FAITH is such a personal journey that to even talk about it would require far more knowledge of Advaita in its real sense, not in the lumpen element understanding of Jai Shri Rams. And therefore, I may not have a correct answer for your question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You have already asked a question. Do you have another one? You have a raised hand. Yes, sir. I want to speak, sir. Ask a question. You don't speak, please. Sir, uh, uh, sir, I would like to uh, I would like to uh, just a clarification in one regard, sir. Sir, everyone uh, is of the opinion that uh, there should be a reservation for uh, downtrodden sections. Even courts also uphold it. But why don't we, sir, why don't we pay attention to the fact that Ambedkar himself achieved great heights, he became a great person without uh, the support of reservation system. Why, why is it not possible for others to achieve great heights without reservation as it happened in the case of great Ambedkar? Why can't we uh, uh, support in that uh, regard also, sir? Yeah, that is my... Lincoln, sir. Abraham Lincoln, Law Chadakunda Pratha Vakile Aragada, Nen in the Law College of Chadakuna Nadina Kundi. Yuga Law, Okamanchala Kurta. I am an example with this can under I am Laga, I have a chanty Mukhatta, Kale. Then the next question is for, let me ask you, Oka Kashmir, you punted Indian Prime Minister, I appeared Gada, Malander and the Kurko Chair Kashmir Ninja Narutta Laga, Jerago. Okay, Rende the Aroj Parasitilu Yentamba Mosanguna, Eroj Parasit Inka Mosanguna, eh? In so far as caste class divide, we are not a better India than we were in the 50s. We are a worse India today. We are far more polarized. Therefore, to take the best man, Ranchil under Donil Kaler, Gada. So the answer is, he was an exception. He doesn't become the rule. I think there are no more questions. We'll call it a day. Thank you so much. Sir. But before you call it a day, yeah. thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I enjoyed being with all of you this evening. Thank you so much, sir. And it was a genuine attempt to uh, be God Ambedkar and make him the human being I like. Absolutely. Yes, you are right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I, thank, I, I thank Professor Janardhan for introducing you to this. Um, very thankful and also 
We are honored by your presence here, sir. Thank you. Indeed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Telangana Janavedika Zoom online meeting to Chesi Bartha Rabir Ramitkar, Bartha Rajangamo Network, Amchampaina, Ilokopan as Mishra Twenty, Sri Ravichandra Garki, Matelangana Janavedika Tarpana, Patekam at Twenty, Danivada, sir. Ade Vidanga, Unati Karaknolo Parguna Twenty, Professor Sudakar Garki, Professor Vijalak Menangarki, Professor Vishnu Charan Chaudhary Garki. Atlagi Manoj Redigarki, T. Ravindra Garki, Ma Maisha Redigarki, T. Ashok Bavgarki, Mindy Ashok Bavgarki, Jims Garki, Bundu Ashok Margarki, Mitchell Landerki Pura, Peru Peruna, Daneva del Telis Kuntu, Ivalti, Yamsum Intertuni, Bugin Chesi, Vacheva, the Vachevaramlo, Marakam Santo Kalpunta and Telio Kutu, Anderki, Marakasari, Daneva Dalu. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir.